one, good to have you tonight. Glad that you're here. Let's all stand and grab a hymn. We'll turn to hymn number 20. I apologize for getting to the pulpit a little late. I was, uh, I was looking for something, couldn't find it. So uh, that's normally what happens, does, isn't it? So hymn number 20, I'm standing on the solid rock. Sing it with me on the first. Here we go. Through my disappointment, strife, and discontentment, I cast my every care on the Lord. No matter what obsession, pain, or deep depression, I'm standing on the solid rock. Here we go now. I'm standing on the rock of ages saved. From all the storms that rage is rich, but not from Satan's wages, I'm standing on the solid rock. You know, this song is so appropriate, especially now with our study in the book of Philippians, because the theme, I guess, in the book of Philippians is that of joy. In spite of our circumstances, and of course, it's because we are in Christ. So I want, to, want you to think about your relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. When things get tough, when the storms of life will, uh, will no doubt come and the winds will blow, always remember who has you. And that is the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, sing it with me on the last. Here we go. Now I'm pressing onward, each step leads me homeward. I'm trusting in my Savior day by day. And close is our relation, firm is its foundation. So on this solid rock I'll stay. Here we go now. I'm standing on the rock. On the rock of ages, safe from every storm. All the storms that rage is rich in love. I'm rich, not from Satan's wages. I'm standing on the solid rock. Well, amen. I hope that you are tonight. Let's go ahead and bow our heads. What a prayer. Our Father, we are so very grateful and thankful that we can. Uh, Lord, uh, uh, be joyful, even though things are not very, uh, very good in our life. Lord, it is because of our relationship with you. It is because, the, Lord, you saved us. We have a resource that we can turn to. Lord, thank you for that. Bless, bless Lord, uh, the prayer time tonight. And, Lord, the fellowship of the gospel tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. This was a request made by Marlia. Okay, maybe not, but hymn number 137, please. Hymn number 137. I understand that this song is normally sung during Christmas time, but... You know, yes, we celebrate the birth of our Savior, but we ought, to, we ought to celebrate our Savior each and every day. And if there's anything you and I ought to, ought to be able to joy about, it's because we are in Christ. So sing it with me, hymn number 137, Joy to the World. All right, come on, here we go as we sing. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Let earth receive her King. Let every heart prepare Him room. And heaven and nature sing, and heaven and nature sing. And he heaven, heaven, nature sing. Now, some of you are saying, I'm not singing that song. It is not Christmas time. I don't want to look the fool. I'm not going to sing it. Well, here's your chance to repent and sing it, all right? Hymn number 137 on the last, He Rules the World. Come on, sing it with me together. 
He rules a world with truth and grace and makes the nation prove the glories of His righteousness and wonders of His love and wonders of His love and wonders and wonders of his love. You're probably thinking, my goodness, what are we doing? Well, I hope and pray that you do have joy. And I hope and pray that that joy is because of your relationship with the, with the Lord. And it's good to have you tonight. Uh, just in case you have just woke up. Uh, this is Northern Park Baptist Church, and we hope and pray that the Lord speaks to your heart tonight. Let's go ahead and, and uh, brother, brother Jack, won't you come? We're going to take an offering at this time, and we're going to uh, just a reminder to you that it's our others offering goes to help others first of all in our church, and then those outside of our church. If you give towards anything else, I encourage you to make sure you designate it. Okay. By the way, just just sort of a little bit of a plug, uh, obviously. We head into the summer months, um, you know, offerings uh, quite often kind of teeter off. And, and I just want to remind you that uh, we still have to, we have certain financial re responsibilities and things. So what, what am I saying? Just be faithful to God and give. And, uh, and so if you, you know, if you have any questions about the, you know, the giving part as far as what's going on, Marlia will, out, will help you and let you know how the money is used, but you know, we need you to be faithful as we, as we head into the, the summer months, okay? All right, let's go ahead and bow our heads. Brother Jack, would you lead us? Amen. God bless you tonight as you give. Tonight, thank you, Bethany. We have a missionary letter from the Spolsters. They are a missionary uh, um, in the Netherlands. And um, he writes and he says, I thank you. Uh, we, we thank you, first of all, for the privilege of being your missionaries in the Netherlands. We continue to work faithfully and are trusting God to do a work in the hearts of people. <clears throat> they had Easter Saturday breakfast this, this last Easter he says, how we, how we see the famine of the word of God around us. For an Easter Saturday breakfast, we invited parents and children. We advertised, we handed out flyers at the local schools, and we went door to door. A shocking discovery to hear how many children could not come because they were either going to their fathers or their mothers for the weekend. You, you do know, you understand the, the, the brokenness of families 
you know, how it how it affects other things, and and this is an example of, of of one way. Yet one saved man, John, came and brought his wife and some children. That was a true blessing. The gospel was visually presented as a with an evenge cube. Never never heard or seen one of those, but they were very attentive. All enjoyed the breakfast and the two-pound chocolate bunny, which the kids were allowed to... Okay, he, he uses the word kill, but uh, I'm sure they ate it. But anyway, we had invited many, but few came. John, who came to the Easter breakfast, returned. He is concerned about his family. Joanna was able to talk to his wife for a long time during the Easter Saturday breakfast. She does not seem to be willing to take the step of faith. Please pray for Mrs. J. In our village used, uh, in our village used to be two Protestant churches. One church, a split off, had closed its doors years ago and was sold to a beautiful and became a beautiful home with some apartments. Recently, on a Sunday morning, we had a visitor, and while we were having coffee and conversation after the service, the visitor revealed that he was the pastor of the local Protestant church. He mentioned that it was his day of and decided to visit our church. Day off, I assume he meant. A very pleasant surprise. He seemed to enjoy coming and said he would be back for a Wednesday night Bible study. We have great differences, but who knows what God does in his heart. Please pray for this local pastor. He seems very interested about the message from the book of Judges. Oh, we can only imagine, can we not? We are always happy to see our kids and grandkids show up. A recent highlight was to go out again with our son, Philip, for street preaching. Afterwards, we had wonderful opportunities to speak to individuals, and we passed out tracts, New Testaments, and portions of the Bible. On May of 23rd, uh, two families from our sending church are coming to visit. We are very excited. We have been inviting people for these special services with gospel music, testimonies, and preaching. They all sing and several bring stringed instruments. The whole group is planning to be out in the streets as well to sing and preach. Please pray for these events. We are longing for God to bring people to touch hearts and for them to see the need for a Savior. Amen. We, are thank, we thank you again for your prayers, for the lost souls in this world and, and allowing us to serve. In the Netherlands, a small country that is so far removed from the truth of God's word. So pray for John and Joanna Polstra as they serve there. They've been there for a good long while. So pray for them as they continue serving the Lord. Tonight as we pray for our missionaries, let's pray for those Polstras there in the Netherlands, okay? All right. With that being said, let's take some prayer requests tonight. And it's good to have you and appreciate so very much your faithfulness in not only attending together with God's people on a Wednesday night, I believe it's important, but also as God gives you health and as God gives you the ability, you come together, but we also kneel and pray. And um, I know some of you that are online, though you cannot physically come here, but yet at the same time, you also join with us and pray. And I thank you for that. Uh, Megan Atkins had um, sent us a note concerning a request, prayer request for her mom, Vanessa. Um, she um, has having some problems with her eye. She There's bleeding behind one of them, but behind her retina there. and And so... Uh, there is a history of brain aneurysms. And so, no doubt, a lot of concern for Megan and for her mother. So please pray for, her name is Vanessa, uh, Megan Atkins' mother, okay? 
we'll give you updates as we as we hear how things are going. But just wanted to mention it tonight. All right, if you have a prayer request tonight, Susan. All right, so the update on, on uh, Vanessa, they have stopped the bleeding that was behind the retina of her eye, and they're going to be doing some more blood work to find out maybe the cause and what's going on there. So please continue to pray for Vanessa. All right, Barbara? All right, just an update. Uh, Sheila's uh, friend, um, and um, you said nail? Okay, Neil or nail, okay. Anyway, he passed away. And so I just wanted to let everybody know, please pray for the family, uh, his wife, uh, and um, I believe the uh, funeral is uh, this, this weekend. And so pray, pray for the family, okay? Brother Jack? Yeah. Ron was his name? Don, Don. Uh, pray for uh, Don Smith's family. His wife, Virginia, and the other... Other family members, uh, uh, Don went home to be with the Lord. And uh, so pray for the family as they uh, pay their respects and, and obviously the comfort and God gives. And so just pray, pray for the family, okay? Um, Laura? This is, this, uh, did you say Boyd? Uncle Boyd? Roy, I'm sorry, Uncle Roy. Um, uh, this, and that was your uh, uncle. Okay, it's related to Laura, and uh, uh, anyway, he passed away. Uh, and uh, so pray for the family. Um, and, you know, and there's a lot of, apparently a lot of folks that have passed away this week. Uh, and so pray for, pray for, pray for that family and, and all that's going on, the funeral situation and all that, okay? Becky? Wonderful, thank you. Amen. Pray for uh, the Ratliffs, Debbie and Gary. Uh, Debbie uh, had uh, surgery on her foot and everything went well. Uh, I was told there, and so, but please continue to pray. She's, uh, she'll, she's upcoming for another surgery. Uh, and so, then also for Gary, uh, insurance is what it is for sure. They have not approved a, a PET scan, and so, they know that his cancer's back. They just don't know to what extent. And so just pray pray uh, for Gary in regards to that, and they, they can get an answer and, 
and get it going, okay? Uh, Becky? All right, pray for Rosie. She's got an unspoken, sort of a silent prayer request there for this weekend, okay? All right, somebody else, Brother Dave? All right, pray for Kim's cousin, one who lives in Kentucky. Uh, a lot of health issues. And then also her other cousin, uh, Hall, who's dealing with cancer, correct? Louisiana, I believe is what you said. Yeah. Okay. All right, so pray for these. Uh, Barbara? Amen. All right. Barbara's praising that her heart's good. So praise the Lord for that. Amen. Somebody else? Becky? Lori's sister, yeah, okay. Pray for Kara. She's got uh, a doctor's uh, visit this week in in Friday, all right. Uh, and um, so pray for that and the test that she's got there. Also pray for Lori's. Continue to pray for Lori's sister, uh, Lisa. Okay. All right. Is there anybody else, Susan? Yeah, I just said that. Oh, okay. Yep. Anybody else? Sometimes I don't make myself heard. So. All right. Church, uh, may I remind you to be praying for our visitors. Uh, it's not unusual to have, for us to have visitors and, and, um, you know, it's, um, you know, it's one thing for God's people to search and to pray and, and to seek out and invite people to come. But what if God is working in the hearts of people and he just leads them this way? For some other reason why they find this place, I'm not sure exactly. A lot of times it's because they're so close. A lot of people that live in this neighborhood they find themselves in trouble. They find themselves in difficult situations. And they look for the first church they can find. A lot of times it's this one. And so it's not unusual to have visitors. And, and uh, so would you just pray for the visitors that we've had and pray that God would send who he wants to uh, concerning uh, you know, God's will in their lives. And, and uh, you know, you never know background of people and where they come from and why and all of that stuff and uh, but God does you and I just need to be faithful uh, in doing what we do and uh, in living faithfully the way God because you just just don't know how God will use you and so all right are there any other prayer requests before we uh, okay this is the last time I'm just all right no go ahead Becky Kate Lynn, Kaylin, Kaylin. Uh, this is uh, Jim and Becky's niece, and she's going on a mission trip, which obviously is good, but um, you know, obviously sometimes that can really be a little scary going into another country, and and uh, and so just 
pray for God's protection and guidance in that, in that endeavor, okay? Yes, Lisa? Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. You just never know, folks, how God will use you. That's why it's so important to live for Jesus every day, everywhere you go, no matter, you know, it just is because, you know, God is good. He knows what he's doing. He's, he's looking for people to use uh, for his honor and for his glory. So I'm excited about the book of Philippians and what we're about to get into and all that. And uh, I tell you, it, it's, it's, it's good. It, it just really is. And I hope you're excited about your relationship with the Lord. And I hope you come hungry because it's going to be good. So anyway, all right, let's, uh, church, let me remind you to be praying for our country. Let's be praying for uh, our, uh, our, not only federally as far as our president of the United States, but locally here, you know, our government uh, and the state house and all that. Yeah, you know, every now and then when you pray for this, you know, stay out. Don't forget to pray for Brother Barnes as his ministry there as well. But uh, I don't know why, but uh, uh, our, uh, our guy that, that sprays our, our lawn, he, uh, for some reason, he said to me this morning when he saw me, he says, hey, keep praying for America because our, our country is in a, in, a, in, a, in a world of hurt in whatever he said. I don't know. And, uh, and so it's bothering a lot of people. That's, that's for sure. But, but we ought to pray no matter what. And uh, so I encourage you to do that. But don't forget to pray for our police officers, our first responders, paramedics, people like that as well. And uh, obviously what you heard tonight, okay? So let's go to the Lord in prayer. And, uh, and then I'll close this in prayer. We'll get right into the Word of God tonight.
Lord, thank you tonight for the privilege we've had to hear so many prayer requests and many have passed away. And, and right now, this week, a lot of families will be gathering together to pay their respects. And Lord, I pray that you'll put in their midst someone that will share the gospel, someone that will hold up the truth in, in light of all that they're facing and the difficulty that they're going through because there's more to life than a casket. There's more to life than, than just this, this world. And I pray that, that, uh, that Lord, you would uh, have your will and way accomplished in those places. I pray also, Father, for many that are sick. And, and we've mentioned many. I think of the Ratliffs and or what a constant battle they have been facing physically. And, and, I, and I, no doubt they're uh, it, it gets long and it gets hard, and I, I just pray for your comfort, and I thank you for the, for the, for the ladies that helped with food, and no doubt I pray that uh, they, they know that they have a God that loves them, and Lord, that is faithful, and Lord, thank you so much for the church, and, and Lord, help us to continue to live the way we ought to live before not only uh, our brothers and sisters in Christ, but Lord, even visitors and those that are lost, Lord, help us to be what you would have us to be, that we might reach this world for the cause of Christ. Lord, bless the spolsters, bless them as they continue to minister. Help them not to get discouraged when people don't come. But Lord, help them to keep on keeping on. Thank you so much for them. And Lord, we, we're mindful of, of, of uh, uh, this precious little uh, one that's going on a mission trip. Lord, that you'll protect her and you'll watch over not only her, but the whole group. And Lord, may, you, may your will be done through them, I pray. Now, Lord, we look forward to the word of God tonight. Help me to do what I can and uh, may your will be done, I ask in Jesus' name, amen. Well, praise the Lord. Take your Bible tonight and turn to the book of Philippians. That's where we're at. Yes, sir. Right. Dave just reminded us that tomorrow is the anniversary of D-Day and uh, Normandy and, and so... Obviously, you know, that, that is quite significant. And, and so uh, uh, don't forget to pray for our soldiers. And, and uh, you know, may we learn from history. And uh, so just, just don't forget that tomorrow, okay? All right. Thank you, Dave. All right. Book of Philippians. Um. Last week we talked about it uh, as Paul writes this letter. He includes not only himself but, but Timotheus and, and uh, his, uh, his greeting is, is quite endearing. And I say that from the standpoint that, that uh, he doesn't have to prove his apostleship or anything like that. He comes at them. He, he writes this letter from more of a uh, uh, brother and sister in Christ type of uh, of remark and and uh, he, he it's more of endearing and 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 uh, he he even refers to himself as uh, and Timothy as servants we're just your bond bond slaves that's all we are and uh, but tonight he and he in verse number two and this is where we're going to actually begin tonight you know he's writing to a church that uh, he was a part of starting, you know, at least 10 years from this writing. He was a part of that. And, and now, now with circumstances that have gone on and, and uh, he's writing to this church uh, for various reasons, but he, but he feels very close to this church and, and he wants to encourage this church and and so he writes and he says, Grace be unto you and, and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me first of all say that this, this salutation, this greeting is not uncommon for Paul. But even though it's not uncommon, it is still very important. 
because of to whom he's writing to, he's writing to believers. And if there's any group of people that ought to understand these terms, it ought, it ought to be believers. The two words that, that, that are, are expressed here is the word grace and the word peace. Boy, and I tell you, and if there's, you know, and so, you know, if there's any group of people that ought to understand those, it is those that have been saved. And, uh, and so, so Paul says to this group, grace be unto you and peace uh, from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. And obviously, just, just a little bit here, the word grace means favor god's you know it's been to, it's been defined as god's unmerited favor and and uh, and all of that and well i tell you if there's any group of people surely the church right should understand grace and peace surely the church should be able to identify with that and um, you know we need god's grace throughout our christian life for sure and uh, obviously in salvation and stewardship and, and also in thanksgiving. And, and many Christians do not wish favor on their fellow believers. We too easily fall into the sins of envy and jealousy. I tell you, we ought to, be, we ought to want God to bless people. We ought to want God to do his work in the hearts of people. And uh, so grace... And then peace, I tell you, before we can ever have peace, grace must be exercised for sure. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5, right quickly, verse 1 and 2, Therefore, being justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, by whom also we have access by faith into this grace, wherein we stand and rejoice in hope of the glory of God. Without a doubt, isn't it good to know that you have peace with God? That, that because of what Jesus Christ did, uh, you know, we are no longer an enemy, but we have peace with God. And so Colossians chapter 1 verse 20 even says, and having made peace through the blood of his cross. And so without a doubt, uh, you know, thank God for peace and thank God for grace and, and those things. But but as Paul continues to write on, let's move on to verse number three, because I want to read to you. The Bible says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Now, please understand, as we, as we get into this letter, we're about to dive in with, with everything we've got here. You know, apparently, you know where Paul is. He's in prison. He's He's shackled, he's, you know, whatever the case may be, there may be a guard there, there may not be, I'm not quite sure about all that, but, but he is, he is in prison and, and no doubt probably has a lot of time to what? Think. And, uh, and, and in his situation, no doubt what's on his mind, what he thinks about a lot is the Philippians. And what God has done in their lives. You know, it is not uncommon to hear from the Apostle Paul in other letters. He says, I have so much joy because of what God has done in your life. He even said at one, one, one point that you are my joy. Now, of course, what he was referring to was what God has done in their lives. And, uh, and I tell you, and so... He writes and he says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Paul was a grateful man, no doubt. By the way, I think you and I, it would help our joy if we learned to be thankful. I'm just telling you. And, you know, I, you know and, again, and if you want to complain about it, let me just remind you of Paul's situation right now because he's what? He's in prison. So instead of, you know, being all mad and upset of, of the fact that he cannot do what he wants to do and come on, God, I'm here and I'm trying to do your work and now I'm stuck here. He's not doing that. If anything, he, he, he's taken that situation and he's, and he's looked to God and said, God, I thank you. I thank you. 
And as he writes this letter, by the way, Paul is thinking of someone else now. He's thinking of the needs of some of the people. So he says, you know what? I think I'll write a letter to encourage people, to encourage the Philippians because he's remembering them and all the things that God has done and, and all the things that, that has happened through him with the Philippians. I can only imagine. But he says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Do you think maybe he thought of Lydia? Do you think maybe he thought of the demon-possessed girl or, or the, the, the jailer? And what happened there with him and all of that stuff? You see, one writer put it and said this. He says, maybe he remembered how God saved them. How the church was formed. Remember that? How that, that his own deliverance from jail and, and boy, what a miraculous event that was from, from, uh, from Philippi. And not only that, the development of the church. One of the things you and I are going to see here is how much this church has matured. How much it has grown. Not so much numerically, but Spiritually. And no doubt Paul is remembering that and, and, and so the development of the church, their kindness to him. On many occasions, I'm sorry, you maybe didn't hear what I just said to you. Their kindness, the Philippian church, their kindness toward Paul. You mean, is it proper for churches to be kind to people? To help people? Well, in this case, Paul being the missionary that he was and doing the work that, that, that God, you know, how, how it came about, I'm not quite sure about all that, but they were quite on not more than one occasion, they helped Paul. They encouraged Paul. Take your Bible tonight and turn. Uh, by the way, you're in Philippians, right? Philippians chapter 4. Philippians chapter 4, look at verse 14. When you get there, say amen. The Bible says, notwithstanding, are you there? Ye have well done that ye did communicate with my afflictions. In other words, the word communicate there, he's referring to helping him. So they helped him in his afflictions, his trials and so forth. Verse 15, now ye Philippians know also that in the beginning of the gospel, when I departed from Macedonia, no church communicated with me or helped me as concerning giving and receiving, but ye only. Now think about this. In verse, verse 16, for even in Thessalonica, ye sent once and again unto my necessity. It was Epaphroditus that was the the Aaron, Aaron, Aaron guy, the delivery guy. But, but you know, not just, not just once, but more than once, on different occasions, the Philippian church says, you know, we need to help the Apostle Paul. All right, let's, let's, let's pull some money together. And, uh, and let's, uh, let's see what we can do. And, and hey, uh, Epaphrodites, why don't you, would you be willing to take it? And, uh, okay, I'll do it. And so they do it. They, they gather it together. They no doubt pray about it and all that stuff. And off it goes. This happened more than once. Folks, I tell you, it's a good thing to be a giving church. It's, uh, I, please listen to what I'm telling you. It's, it's a good thing uh, concerning your faith to be a giving believer, to be mindful of the needs of other people and, and to, 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 you know, if you have it to give, then give. And Paul, as he writes this letter, no doubt this, as well as other things, he's remembering this. He's remembering what God has done and, and uh, he's, his heart is filled with gratitude. No doubt. 
Helen Keller says this, said this, so much has been given me, I have no time to ponder over that which has been denied. Boy, oh, I tell you, you know, all of us, we can set and we can maul over all the stuff we don't have. We can maul over all the stuff that happened to me that we don't like. I mean, we could do that. But we fail to remember what God has done for us. All the goodness. And I tell you, I believe without a doubt it is that we should not only focus on the good in our life and what God is doing and what God can do because it will motivate us to get up and do something. And Paul, his, he's, he's remembering, he's, you know, um, as, one, as one writer put it, you know, the Philippians was on his mind. He remembers them. They, he was grateful for how they took care of him. And he was grateful for, for you know, all the good that, that came from their giving, their, their, their uh, uh, care of him. The more passionate our faith is, the more consistent our giving will be. And I know, I, I, though I didn't plan this, you know, I did mention just at our offering time tonight, boy, I tell you, you know, we, we need to give. And I, and I say that only from the standpoint is it's when, it's when my treasurer comes to me and says, preacher, I'm sorry, you got you to gotta watch it. Don't spend any money. You know, we really didn't have a very good offering this week. And, uh, you know, and, and, you know, and I am not a preacher that dwells on money. And I, I truly believe this, that if God has worked in your heart, then he will lead you to give. Because that's what he says in his word. And uh, I believe we've been so blessed in so many ways that, that I tell you, God is good. But at the same time, sometimes we need to be reminded Hey, this is what I need to do because we can get so caught up in our world that we forget. We forget the needs of the church. We forget, you know, that, hey, there are other people that are in need. We got missionaries all across this, you know, land and, and they need help. You know, and, and you know, and so, so may we be. And, and so Paul here, he says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. In verse four, the Bible says it like this, always in every prayer of mine for you all making requests with joy. No doubt there was a list of things that, that, that when Paul would request in his prayer life, he did it with joy. Now, wait a minute. He's, he's in prison. Where does that whole joy come in? Because I tell you, you know, our circumstances don't determine whether or not we're happy or not. Our, our, you know, it's because that we are in Christ. Continuous joy. Paul we, makes his request with joy. He, he prays and he, and, and he asks God and, and there's always joy in it. Paul's circumstances at the time he wrote his letter were dire, no doubt. He was imprisoned in Rome, possibly facing even execution. We'll see that later on, but, but you know, he was under house arrest and, and uh, just wasn't quite sure about anything. Yet, without a doubt, he was sure about one thing, what God was doing. He was sure that God was real. He was sure that, that, that there, were, there were those believers there at Philippi that, that God had done an amazing thing. And that church was growing and being, you know, is strong. May I remind you tonight, joy only comes from the Holy Ghost. Let me say that again. Joy only comes from the Holy Ghost, not from circumstances of life well I would be happy if I had a new car well I'd be happy if everything you know someone would pay my bills can I tell you no you won't no you really wouldn't the Bible says 
Romans chapter 14, verse 17. Listen carefully, right quickly. For the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but righteousness and peace and joy in the Holy Ghost. Joy comes from serving others. Even as Paul was in prison, he was serving the church at Philippi through his prayers and by sending the letter that we're actually looking at. I mean, you have to at least admit, as, as Paul was in prison, yet apparently he thought, hey, I want to be a blessing to these people. And I'm sending this letter, and, and he says, you know what? I thank my God upon every remembrance of you. Can I stop for a moment? Do you live your life in such a way that the people you've met in the past can think about you and say, you know what, I thank God for you. Think about it. You see, you know, some people only try to do good things when people are watching. Some people really and truly only think about doing good when, well, what's in it for me? Well, if I do something good and I get it on camera, then everyone will like my post and they'll, and they'll click that little thing. Is that the only reason why you do what you do? Would to God that we as a church, in spite of what this world is doing, in spite of the conditions of our society and any of that, that we strive to be a blessing and a help to people. Always in every prayer of mine for you all making requests with joy. For sure. Paul, no doubt, was concerned uh, and he invested his life into people. And uh, he wanted to help them to grow. He wanted to help them to be what, what God would have them to be. He, he tried to disciple them and all of those things. And he got excited. By the way, when you invest your life into people, that's exactly what will happen to you. You'll get excited. You'll get excited with what God will do. I, I challenge you and I encourage you, find someone you can pour your life into. Find someone that needs the gospel. Find someone that needs to learn and to grow. And I tell you, you'll get excited. Can I tell you, you'll be excited to come back to church. You know how come? You want to see if they're there. You want to see if, if, if they're growing and, and, and on all of those things. So I challenge you, as Paul did, invest your life in people for sure. The Bible says in Luke 15, 7, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over 90 and 9 just persons which need no repentance. Apparently, it, it even excites the angels in heaven when somebody repents, when somebody gets saved. I tell you, find someone and pour your life into them. Help them, help them. And as Paul writes this letter, no doubt that's what he wants. And he's remembering them. And he's remembering what God has done in there and, and how they got saved. And, and boy, the church and what the church is doing. And, and no doubt he's excited. His life is filled with joy. But preacher, he's in, he's in prison. That doesn't matter. That doesn't matter. A lot of, a lot of Christians can say, oh, I'm saved. But a lot of them cannot say, and I'm joyful. So let me ask you, can you say that your life is full of joy? Why not? Why not? Well, verse number five, and we'll close here. For from, for your fellowship, so he's praying. By the way, I, I, though I, 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 I can't spend much time here, but I will point it out. Paul apparently had a prayer life. Paul apparently spent much time praying. 
concerning the ministry and the lives of people. And if I may stop and say, how often do you pray? Do you only pray when things don't go right? Have you, I mean, what's bothering you? Have you prayed about it? You get what what I'm trying to say? I tell you, Paul was a prayer warrior. And and so he says, and and I'm going to start with verse 3 again. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in in every prayer of mine, for you all making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. You know, when we Baptist think of fellowship, you know what we think about? Food. And hey, I love food. I can eat food all day. I'll, I'll say this even. We got the best cooks in town. I tell you, it's good. But can I tell you? I'm not passing this around, by the way. (laughs) Even though we may share a meal with someone, that isn't necessarily fellowship. That may be probably an acquaintance where we share a meal and maybe talk about things, but that isn't actually fellowship fellowship that we're talking about in the Bible. Fellowship has to do, and Paul put it, puts it like this. He says it, he says it like this. He says, for your fellowship, he says, I thank God. And in in remembrance, he says, for your fellowship in the gospel. In other words, the word fellowship has to do with what you have in common. And obviously in this case, when it comes to the fellowship of the gospel, it is their salvation, isn't it? That's what it is, the fellowship of the gospel. And and I tell you, what, what brings us together, what brings us together as a body of believers, that we can have fellowship because we are saved. We're saved based upon the gospel of Jesus Christ. And that's what Paul was thanking God for, that that they got saved. And and that was something that they share in common. The gospel of Jesus Christ. And oh, I tell you, that's what ought to fuel this church. That's what ought to gather us together is our fellowship. We mean fellowship, fellowship of the gospel. The fact that we got saved that, we, that we, we understand the grace of God. We understand that relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. That ought to be our fellowship. You see how important that is. <clears throat> Satan has always, Satan always hates Christian fellowship. It is his policy to keep Christians apart. By the way, he does a good job of it. I'm just telling you. He does. Anything that anything which can divide us, he delights in. So if anything Satan's going to do, he wants to encourage Christians to separate. Stay away. Don't come together. And sadly enough, he, he does it. Uh, you know, uh, the question that I would, I would ask so often is, where have you been? Why don't you come? Because we ought to have fellowship of the gospel. But it's almost as if that doesn't matter anymore. Now, when we say, hey, we got a meal coming, guess what? Everybody will come. In other words, people would rather fellowship over chicken instead of over the gospel. 
In other words, and I sometimes wonder, maybe it's because they don't have any fellowship with the gospel at all. They don't even know the gospel. That's why there's no fellowship. But Paul said, the fellowship, I thank God in my remembrance of you, of your fellowship, of the gospel. Oh, I tell you, because Paul was no doubt remembering how God saved them and his work in their lives. It was incredible. For your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. He says, man, thank God for the fellowship of the gospel. And look what the gospel has done in your life. I tell you, it's, it's, it's incredible. Right quickly, and then I'll close. In chapter 1, verse 5, you saw it there. We see the fellowship in the gospel. In chapter 1, verse 7, you're going to see the defense and the confirmation of the gospel. In chapter 1, verse 12, by the way, <clears throat> And just in this chapter alone, there's six references to the gospel. Chapter 1, verse 12, furtherance of the gospel. Chapter 1, verse 17, defense of the gospel. Chapter 1, verse 27, conversation becometh the gospel of Christ. And then chapter 1, verse 27 again, the faith of the gospel. Tell you, that's what the church should be about is the gospel. It's where we were saved, right? The gospel. But it is that same gospel we continue to preach. It is that same gospel that, that changes life. It's that same God. It's the same Holy Spirit that works and convicts. And it's about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it is that fellowship. That's what it, koinonia is the Greek word. It is that, that which we have in common. Because we've been saved. May we not lose sight of it. May we, as Paul was writing to this church, may we thank God for the gospel in our lives. It's the fellowship of the gospel. Lord, may we realize how important the gospel was and still is today in our lives, in our church. And Lord, may that fellowship of the gospel continue. May we rally around the, the defense of it. May we Lord, uh, continue to promote the gospel. Oh, Lord, may your will be done as we live the gospel in this world. Lord, thank you for the church. Thank you for the book of Philippians. Bless us in Jesus' name, amen. God bless you tonight. Anyone wants some popcorn, you're more than welcome to have some. <laughs>